Our first example here, we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 1 if our x values are less than negative 2. So, for example, negative 3, negative 5, negative 2.5. Any number that's less than negative 2, we would plug it into the function x squared minus 1. It's equal to 5x plus 3 if our x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So if our x is negative 2, if our x is 0, 3, 10, 100, anything like that, we plug it into the 5x plus 3 function. Now, um, I have found that this helps some people uh, to put the two functions here uh, side by side. And uh, the one that's less than goes on the left. And the one that's greater than goes on the right. You put the x value here, right here in the middle. And I just drew that arrow to indicate that if my x is negative 2, I use this piece right here. Now, the way that I think that that is helpful is because when we have to come down here and find f of negative 5, we've got to relate negative 5 to negative 2. It's either less than negative 2 or it's greater than negative 2. It's less than negative 2, so we use the piece that's on the left. We're going to plug it into x squared minus 1, and only x squared minus 1. You do not, you're not going to have two answers. You don't plug it into both pieces. You only plug it into whichever piece that x value fits into. So negative 5 is less than negative 2, so we plug it into the first one. Or if you use this illustration over here on the side, Negative 5 is to the left of negative 2, so we use the function that's on the left. Either way, you should get an answer of 24. Make sure that if you're plugging that into your calculator, that you put parentheses around the negative 5. If you do not put parentheses around the negative 5, it will not give you the correct answer. Okay, f of negative 2. Negative 2 is obviously equal to negative 2, so we use the second piece, or we use a little illustration over here. I've got the arrow pointing to that piece because that's the one that works when you're equal to negative 2. So negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. f of negative 2 is equal to negative 7. And f of 7, 7 is of course greater than negative 2. So we plug that into the second piece. 35 plus 3 is 38. Okay. Absolutely use your calculator if you need to. I just did the arithmetic in my head. Any questions about that so far? Okay. What if we have three pieces? Okay. If we have three pieces, you can do the same thing. If you like my little illustration that I have there in blue, you can do the exact same thing with three pieces. Uh, one half x plus three, draw a line, put the x value on that line. That one says equal to, so I'm going to draw the arrow uh, to that piece. Then our middle function is negative x minus one. The other x value is one. Neither one of those had the equal to, so I'm not going to draw an arrow. And then two x cubed plus nine is my last piece that says if x is greater than or equal to 1. So if I'm equal to 1, I'm going to plug it into the third piece. So g of 2, where does 2 fit into this illustration? 2 is greater than 1, so it fits in the third piece right here. So 2 times 2 cubed plus 9 absolutely plug it into your calculator if you are trying to do it without the calculator you've got to do the 2 cubed first 2 cubed is 8 then you multiply by 2 you get 16 16 plus 9 is 25 but if you plug it in the calculator it's plugging in all at one time okay negative 1 negative 1 is right here in between negative 4 and positive 1 so we plug it into that middle piece now just be very careful with this there was already a negative in front of the x. It's negative x, so I've got to put a negative in front of whatever my x value is. 
and then the minus 1. So a negative, negative 1 is positive 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. You can also do that in your calculator. Your calculator can handle it just fine. Negative parentheses, negative 1, minus 1 gives you 0. Okay. All right, g of negative 6. g of negative 6. Negative 6 is less than negative 4. It's over here on the left side, so we plug it into uh, that very far piece or the first piece, whichever way you are looking at it. So we get negative 3 plus 3. That's also 0. We can get the same answer for more than one x value. Not a big deal. Okay. Over there on the left side of your paper, you should see this. Unfortunately, I think the hole puncher kind of messed up the middle part of it. So I apologize. Um, just fix it so that you can actually read it. 3f of 0 minus g of negative 6 plus 3g of negative 2. Okay, so that's a whole lot of information right there. I have seen them ask questions like this on like release test questions and things like that. What they're asking you to do is they're asking you to use two different piecewise functions at the same time. And they're asking you to combine some results. So here's how I think the easiest way to handle this is. Go over here to the side and write the f of 0, the g of negative 6, and the g of negative 2. Okay, We're going to find those answers just like we just did. Okay, So f of 0, the f function was the function from number one. Uh, I'm going to check first of all and make sure that I haven't already figured that one out. We did negative five, negative two, and seven, so I do have to do some more work. Okay, zero is greater than negative two, so I'm going to use the second piece, five x plus three. So I'm going to plug in zero into five x plus three. So my answer is three. F of 0 is 3. Okay. G of negative 6. We already did that one. Okay. G was our function from number 2. We did G of negative 6. We got the answer of 0. There is no point in computing it again. It hasn't changed. The math didn't change. Exact same thing. Okay. And G of negative 2. We did positive 2. We didn't do negative 2. So let's figure out where negative 2 fits in. Negative 2 is between negative 4 and 1. So we use the middle piece. There's another case where it was already negative. So we got to change the signs. That becomes positive 2 minus 1. That gives us an answer of 1. Okay. So we have found these three pieces of the problem. We're not finished, though. We've got to plug them in. Okay. We've got to plug them in where they show up in our problem. So we've got three times f of 0, f of 0 is equal to 3. So you replace f of 0 with the 3. Minus g of negative 6 is 0 plus 3 times g of negative 2. We said that that was equal to 1. Okay, so I've just taken the problem. I've replaced my letters with their values. Now I'm just going to plug it in the calculator. See what I get. 3 times 3. I don't need to subtract 0. Subtracting 0 doesn't do anything. 3 times 3 plus 3 times 1 gives me 12. Okay. So that's the answer. Kind of a lengthy process, but I would not be surprised to see a question like that on the EOC. Any questions about any of those steps. We're going to do some more like that. Just wondering if there's initial questions. Okay, now graphing is really easy because Desmos does it for you. Desmos will do it for you. Uh, so we're going to see at number three. Let's look at number four. Okay, let's do number four first. Uh, so, in Desmos, the way that you do it is you type in the equation negative 3x, whoops, put my negative in the wrong spot, negative 3x minus 7. Okay, now that graph 
the entire line, negative 3x minus 7. Okay, I got the whole line right here. Well, I put in the x is less than negative 1 this way. It shift and the squiggly looking parenthesis, the brace, okay, it's there beside the P button, I think. Okay, shift and the button beside P should give you the, the brace. Okay, and this is if x is less than negative 1. So you type in the inequality just like it looks, and look what happened. My line still looks the same, but I don't see all of it that I saw before. Okay, look at where it cuts it off. It cuts it off at an x value of negative 1. That's where it stops, that x value of negative 1. So that's what the piecewise function is doing. Then you press enter. You type in the other part of the equation. Now, the other part of this equation is just a constant. So to make a constant show up, you have to put y equals. Okay, you have to put y equals in order for a constant to show up. And then you do the same thing. Put your brace. X is greater than or equal to. If you do the greater than button and then the equal to symbol, it turns it into greater than or equal to. Negative 1. Okay. Same deal here. Before, that negative 5, that line at negative 5 was going all the way across my graph. But now, look, it starts at x equals negative 1 and goes from there. So what we can do is, um, let me show you one more thing that you can do in Desmos. You can turn these things into tables. Okay, If you click the little wheel above your equations, beside the equation you'll see a little thing that looks like a table and it says convert to a table. If you click that, then it will start a table for you. Now notice the standard is negative 2 to positive 2 and it gives me undefined for a bunch of these numbers. Okay, um, What I'm going to do is I'm going to change these. You can change these x values. So I need like no, let me start with negative 4. Negative 4, negative 3. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Okay, so that gives me specific points that I can then transfer to my paper. I can plot the point negative 4, 5, negative 3, 2. Okay, so just transfer those points to your paper. Negative 4, 5, negative 3, positive 2. What was the next one? Negative 2, negative 1. Thank you. Negative 2, negative 1. Okay, now look at what happens at negative 1. It says it's undefined. Well, let's look at our piecewise function. It did not have an equal to at negative 1. Okay? It does not have an equal to at negative 1. So this is what we need to do. You, can, um, you need to figure out, well, where would that point be? What would the y value be right there? If you need to zoom in, whatever you need to do to figure out what that y value would be, and I can see very clearly that that should be at negative 4. I'm going to put, instead of a point... At negative 1, negative 4, I'm going to put a, uh, a circle. Okay, I'm going to put a circle at negative 1, negative 4. And then I'm just going to connect the dots to draw my line. Okay. So the end of this has an open circle because it was not equal to negative 1. So that's what I have over here uh, on the left side of uh, the example here, if it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, you put a point there. If it's just less than or greater than, you put an open circle. The other side of it is negative 5 the whole way, so we really don't need a table there. And this one gets the point on the end because it is equal to negative 1. Okay. So Desmos will graph it for you, but you've got to be able to identify where am I supposed to have a circle, where am I supposed to have a point, um, because it doesn't it doesn't like to uh, it doesn't do that right off the bat. Now I'm going to show you if you don't, before you convert it to a table, 
when you click on the graph, you can drag that point all the way to the end. It won't let you do it when it's a table. I don't know why, but before you convert it to a table, you can click and drag, and it will show you that open circle. It just doesn't show it to you right off the bat. Okay, but then on this other one, if I click and drag all the way to the end, notice it shows me the actual point. So the technology is great. You just got to know how to use it. Okay, let's practice with the evaluating <clears throat> um, really quickly again. G of negative 4. Negative 4 is less than negative 1. So we use the first piece. So negative 3 times negative 4 minus 7. That's 12 minus 7. So that is 5. G of negative 4 is equal to 5. G of 2. <coughs> 2 is greater than negative 1, so we use the second piece. The second piece doesn't have any, it doesn't have an X. We don't have anywhere to plug in the 2. The answer, if it fits in the second piece, is always negative 5. That's shown to us on the graph over here. Any of these X values on this side have a Y value of negative 5. That's why that answer is negative 5. It is not negative 10. You don't do 2 times negative 5 it's always negative 5 because there's no x. All right, let's do number 8. Let's do one that has three pieces. You handle it exactly the same way. Okay, nothing's different. You're just going to put three things into Desmos instead of two. Let me clear out what I had. Negative 3x, brace. x is less than 0. Okay, negative one half x not c x minus one zero is less than or equal to x less than six and then x minus seven brace x is greater than six okay so i'm literally just copying what is on the paper um you just put a brace around the inequality part, and it will graph it for you. So you can either do the table thing, or technically you can just click and drag and find the whole number values. So like negative 1, 3, uh, negative 2, 6. So um, negative 1, 3, negative 2, 6. At 0, we have a point, we have the point 0, 0. Notice how that's gray. Okay, that means that's also the same as the open circle. Okay, that gray point is also the same as the open circle because that piece is not equal to 0. So at the origin right here, we've got an open circle. That side of the graph. So do the middle piece. Endpoints. One endpoints. Zero, negative one. Zero, negative one. And six. Looks like we're headed towards negative four. It's undefined. We've got an open circle, but six, negative four. Zero, negative one. And six, negative four or open circle right there. Point at 0, negative 1, because it is equal to 0. It is not equal to 6, so we have the open circle on that end. And then the last piece, x minus 7. Let's see, where are we starting? It's undefined, but it looks like it should be negative 1. 6, negative 1. And seven zero eight one so six negative one open circle seven zero eight one there's that piece of my graph. Okay. So in terms of graphing. The expectation is mostly that you can recognize, uh, match an equation to the graph. It's not so much that you're going to have to graph it by hand. You're just going to have to match it to a graph. 
Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you know how to use the Desmos, you should be fine. If you can match pictures, you're good. Okay. Now, evaluating, you do need to know what's going on. So let's do a little bit more practice with the evaluating. H of 2. H of 2. 2 is between 0 and 6. So we use the middle function. If you want to arrange them side by side and do the line thing, that's fine. Okay, I'm just not going to do that right now. Um, negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1 minus 1. That's negative 2. Correct me if I get one of these wrong. Okay, H of 6. We've got a little problem with H of 6. The middle piece doesn't say equal to 6. The last piece doesn't say equal to 6. So we have nowhere to plug in an X of 6. So this happens every once in a while. H of 6 is undefined. It has no value. Because none of the pieces give us the option for plugging in 6. Mm -hmm. H of 8. 8 is greater than 6, so we plug it into the last piece. So 8 minus 7 is 1. And negative 3. Negative 3 is less than 0, so we plug it into the first piece. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Okay. Let's do another one of those kind of weird ones where we combine them. I've got this written on the left side of your paper there as well. Negative 4, H of 4, minus F of 7. So H of 4. We have not calculated H of 4. Let's come over here to the side and work on H of 4. So 4 is between 0 and 6, so we plug it into the middle piece. Negative 1 half times 4 minus 1. That's negative 3. F of 7, F of X is the function from number 7. And our X value is 7. 7 is greater than 4. So we use the last piece. The last piece is always negative 3. Okay, this is from... Completely coincidental that these were both negative 3. That does not usually happen. It did not happen the first time. It just happened this time. Okay, so let's go back to the problem. Negative 4 times h of 4 is negative 3 minus f of 7 is negative 3. So we've got 12 plus 3 is 15. 4h of 4 minus f of 7 is 15. Any questions about that? 